Okay, once again, uh, welcome to this uh, business paper, Economic Development Committee. Uh, I wish I would like to acknowledge the traditional uh, custodians of the land we're on here today, the Wiradjuri people, and pass my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I would also like to uh, advise that uh, this uh, particular meeting is being live streamed. Any uh, any council uh, meeting? That, any Mr. council Mayor, meeting? I have a question. Yes. I have a question. Why is it being live streamed? At uh, normal committee meetings aren't. The finance committee meeting isn't. The operations committee any, meeting uh, isn't. Why is this one being any, live streamed? Any council meeting that has got the full members of council uh, at the meeting has to be live streamed. That's my that's my understanding, Mr. General Manager. Yeah, if a committee um, is constituted by the council and has full membership of the council, um, there's a requirement uh, to stream that. Thank okay. you. So, thank you. Uh, we've got uh, present uh, apologies. Any apologies? Somebody would like to move? Seconded Councillor Ring. Those in favour? Those against? Carried unanimous. Uh, has somebody got a pen that I can borrow? That I can borrow, please. Thank you. Our declarations of interest. Any declarations of interest? Nil. Uh, we'll move to staff reports then. The first, uh, the first three staff report is uh, the Seven Valleys discussion paper, prepared by uh, Simon Francis, and Simon will. Uh, Give us an update of uh, where we're up to, or Mr. Muir, one of the two. Thank you. They're working. Is that one, two, one, two? Now, uh, councillors, because this is a committee meeting, um, we will have questions uh, after the uh, presentation. Thank you. Best laid plans. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll, I'll call on uh, uh, Simon to help me in a moment. Uh, the purpose of uh, the report and the discussion paper uh, relates to uh, the Council's resolution as to where it would like to be heading in terms of its marketing strategies for the city. Uh, and it just so happens that it coincides with some of the work that Simon and also our regional marketing cooperative had been working on um, and there had been a, a campaign actually planned in relation to the Seven Valleys and what we're just bringing up at the moment is some of the uh, the marketing collateral that has already been prepared but in terms of the um, the wider issue of the brand strategy and where Seven Valleys fits with that uh, essentially what the discussion paper talks to is that uh, the concept uh, is good and is supported. Um, and at first instance, we would like to head off on our campaign and take this further with some further information to come. Uh, so probably without further ado, uh, if councillors have any questions, uh, Simon and myself will try to take that. I'd just like to say it's a good report and uh, I fully support it. So if I could, Mayor, um, just um, for clarification, um, I had to look this up. We're talking about the Seven Valleys, Cape de Wog and Canimbla, Megalong, Hartley, Taranara and Lithgow. Could just someone confirm for me, though, um, where Wayne Portman and Cullumbull sit? Is that in the, what they call the Lithgow Valley or, or it's a combination of um, different ones? Um, look, the, the Seven Valleys is an overarching kind of tagline, really. So it's it's not to be taken too literal in terms of, uh, even though the brand lockup does have the valleys listed underneath there, uh, obviously within that region of that name Seven Valleys obviously sits Portland, Bolerowing. Obviously, Lithgow is a valley itself, and Portland and Wallerowing are probably the two uh, that uh, are the place within an actual valley. But uh, we believe that the value 
of the actual name Seven Valleys and the overarching name Seven Valleys uh, to people from, from the outside of the area who are looking in is certainly going to override any kind of um, problems with Portland and Willowing not actually being in the valley. Yeah, look, I, I, I'm not criticising the um, proposal. I, I, I support it. Um, I understand one of the reasons we looked at it was is that um, in the past it's simply been centred on, on Lithgo and I can understand those living in our, our uh, wider areas um, didn't feel that they were included. So that's why I wanted to make sure that the people that were Willara, Wayne, Portland and Cullen Bullen, like everywhere else, everywhere else seems to be covered, are certainly included. Uh, excuse me, so, uh, through the Mayor, Simon, uh, could you please tell me how you propose to put this out to the public for them to have their say? I think in terms of, firstly, the, the first campaign, the first campaign is ready to go. Um, so I think we'd, we'd like to, um, to, to go and do that. Uh, in terms of the wider consultation in relation to the overarching strategy, that does need some consideration um, and we would seek to probably do another report back in relation to that. Would you be going to do a media release and on um, you know, Facebook so that people have an idea of where things stand and the opportunity to agree with you or disagree? I think that would have to form part of the communication strategy for sure, yes. If I may, Mayor, uh, Council of the State and does raise some important uh, issues. Um, I make the point again, this is all those committee of all councillors. Um, it's still um, on looking at the formal uh, decision-making process in relation to this. The re well, all we can do is recommend. Uh, and then at one stage, um, the, the the full thing will need to come back to Council. And, and I, I take on board the points made by uh, Councillor Statham, um, certainly uh, communication and that to the wider public needs to be part of that uh, proposal, that strategy. If I could, Mayor Thompson, um, the, the Lifco Marketing Co-op, I think that's, that's the proper title, uh, they, they're behind this and I do know there are a number of businesses in the community that fully support the Seven Valleys concept, even though they're not on this committee. They're aware of it and they're pushing it. That's why I raised it at the last meeting. Uh, I, I think from the commercial sector, the strong support from the general public, I don't know. Um, but at some stage, we will go and get that out there and see what people are of the opinion. I, I think uh, most people will, will like it. It gives us a fresh breath of air, gives us new opportunities we haven't had, and that's something that Simon talks about in his paper. And it removes the, the stigma that's been associated with Lifco. And... Um, Although it's not a dirty coal mining town now, you still a lot of people out there who have that perception. So it gives us a chance to rebrand everything and to give a fresh start to our tourism industry. Um, through you, Mayor Thompson, to Simon. And the proposed budget, uh, the estimated cost of the projection of this project, oh. advertising and the general budget involved? Is it in this year's budget if it gets through or next year's 22-23 or...? There is, there is a small 24? allocation for marketing for the campaign, which we'd like to run. Uh, however, when we talk about budget and full rebranding, if that is to occur, there will be other costs which would have to come back for council consideration. Um, everything from uh, uh, media right through probably to signage and, and, and the like. Uh, so that would require some further consideration and probably likely a staged approach, I would think. Mayor, if, if I may again, um, I do need to respond to Councillor Ring. I've never seen Lithgow as a dirty coal mining town at any stage. And let me remind people, coal mining didn't only occur at, in Lithgow, it occurred in Willarawang, around Willarawang, uh, around Cullumbullen, and certainly uh, other areas of our community. Coal mining didn't just care in the didn't just occur in the city of Lithgow. It also occurred in Cape Valley and Walken Valley. So, but apart from that, uh, you know, I uh, I see it as a as a, a very uh, good, well thought out. Uh, you know, it impresses me. Seven Valleys. The one question that I I've never ever known Taranara to be a valley. Uh, 
Oh, I have. That's all I've ever known is the Taranar Valley. Has it? No, well, very good. Well, there you go. See, so I've learned something here tonight. Um, but anyway, I, I think it's a wonderful concept. I know that if uh, people go to zigzag, um, they never ever come over the hill. But if you had some uh, something up there, like seven valleys uh, just over the hill, people would most probably come over the hill. I also say that uh, uh, as far as Megalon goes, they don't come any further than Blackheath. But if you have uh, uh, something there to say, well, you know, if you go a little bit further, you've got all these other wonderful valleys. So I, I really see it as a, as a really great concept. Mr General Manager. So, um, Mr Mayor and Councillors, the intention this evening was just to test how this um, lands or, or pitches with the Council. Um, uh, I'm, I'm picking up, and it's not one or the other, I think is an important point to make. I, when I read the report and the discussion paper, it's suggesting uh, that there's an untapped market or audience out there um, that we're not necessarily uh, landing with uh, at the moment. And so um, I see uh, Seven Valleys and Lithgow actually working in harmony beside one another. And what you'd do is you'd have you know, different strategies and you dial one up for a certain audience and you dial the other up for, for another. For instance, in terms of industrial heritage, I think Lithgow is unrivaled nationally. You know, so you would dial that up. There's a strong brand affinity there, um, perhaps for recreation, active tourism, bird watching and the like, you dial up the Seven Valleys uh, and the like. So, the intention from here, as I understand uh, from Andrew and Simon, is this would come back to the Council uh, for adoption. We have an opportunity to softly test the Seven Valleys concept post-COVID by pushing it out there and seeing how it lands and how it's received. And we'll come back later with a more definitive strategy about how the two will work together uh, and the like going forward. So, um, Just one more thing. In principle, I certainly support the Seven Valleys. However, for me personally as a council, it's most important that the public have their say. Uh, the business owners, I've spoken to quite a few of those and they seem very encouraged by it, but it's certainly all ratepayers should have their say. I think that's very important to, to make sure they feel they're part of this journey. Uh, Mayor Thompson, have a good all respect to the general manager. Um, I, I'm not comfortable with running the two campaigns concurrently. No, you, it, that, that's the way it came across to me. You may not have meant it, but uh, Seven Valleys allows for the industrial heritage to be marketed, not just in Lithgow, but in the Walgan Valley and the Caperty Valley, where you've got extensive uh, industrial heritage as well. I think we've just got to be careful about what messaging we're going to put out there. Yeah, I, I, it, I don't see it. can come back further, but, uh, you know, I don't see it's a competition where one is competing against the other. We need to find that compatibility. If it's just Seven Valleys, well, Seven Valleys isn't now. What is Seven Valleys? Where does it say we've got to bring it to life? Um, but Lithgow, I don't think it's an abandonment of Lithgow at all in any respect. Um, so we need to find a reconciliation between the two. We need to find a place where they can they can play off one another, um, and it captures a broader audience. Councillor Leslie, Councillor Coleman, any comments? Oh, no, listening with interest. Thank you. Good. Mayor, I'm happy to move the recommendation as Councillor um, Statham has picked up. It's really recommending in principle support and a proper uh, implementation strategy to report and be relevant and brought back to Council. I'm happy to move that. Yeah, I'm happy to second it. Yeah. I, I think it would go out to uh, public exhibition anyway, wouldn't it? That, that would be the intention in general. Yes, of course. Now, I do have a question before you put that. Sorry. Um, it, this all has to come back to council anyway. I mean, that's my understanding. It goes out. I mean, even this notice of motion that's been passed here now isn't actually gazetted, is it? I mean, it still has to come to council. It still has to go out. I mean, this is a committee. This is not council. Exactly. Councillor McAndrew made that very clear earlier that it's only... Yeah, I'm just, I just wanted to clarify, just for my yeah. own benefit. Yes. <clears throat> any uh, any recommendations here today have to come back to Council for endorsement or for ratification? Right. Anything? Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, Councillor, so well, it looks like uh, everybody, there's there's nobody against the, the support of this, so a, a re full report will come back to Council. Everybody happy with that? Okay. Uh, we go to uh, 5.2, Tourism Opportunities. Mr Andrew Muir. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. I might speak briefly to this one and Simon can help take any questions. I guess I guess the real uh, purpose behind this report is to, uh, I suppose, advise the Council as to some of the things that are being worked on in anticipation that the whole world will start to become a bit more normal, um, hopefully in the not-too-distant future. Um, and that does also have a relationship to the last report in terms of the, the campaign proposed for the Seven Valleys, but also some of the other things which perhaps Simon can uh, also take questions on um, that are being undertaken to, to try and prepare um, um, for when um, lock, lockdowns uh, do end and uh, we, we get a, a fairly unique opportunity, I think, to try and uh, take advantage of, uh, of tourism to our area in hopefully in a obviously in a, in a safe manner. So uh, that's probably in a nutshell. But if there is a, perhaps any questions, and now now is a good time. Question, question, oh, question questions, councillors. Councillor uh, Um uh, For your mayor, the sign on the wall to Andrew. What what work's being done with the industry out the industry players to make sure they're ready when it does open up again to make sure that they've got a product. And that they're ready to market it. Uh, look, in terms of the resources available, uh, I have been sending out uh, emails to the industry uh, from Destination New South Wales and Destination Country and Outback, who have been holding a series of workshops and uh, advising of funding opportunities as well. So, yeah, there's plenty of resources available out there that I've been uh, pushing out to the industry. No, no, I appreciate that, but have you actually contacted the individual um, operators and spoken to them personally? Uh, look, I haven't uh, spoken to uh, every one of uh, our 140 members, no, but I have spoken to uh, quite a few people. Um, and, yeah, look, obviously it's uh, there's a lot of people out there who are have felt the full effects of uh, the uh, stay-at-home orders um, and are very much looking forward to being able to uh, look at a brighter future. Thank you, Simon. Mayor, if I may, again, just um, in supporting the um, in the report, I do note on, on page five that there has been communication with the Zigzag Railway um, in relation to reopening after the COVID lockdown uh, is lifted, so that's good. Um, the, the first two things that jump out at me as well, coming into summer months and hopefully when the, the restrictions are, are eased, um, um, certainly the two of our most um, uh, important um, tourism it, for summer months has been Lake Lyle and Lake Wallace. So I expect um, there should be a fair bit of activity there. I understand we may be receiving a report on Lake Wallace um, because, as I said before in previous meetings, we have to start moving on that. We have a lease, but it's sort of in limbo at this stage. So um, I see there are two areas, Lake Lyle and Lake Wallace, that um, once the restrictions are lifted before summer, then um, that they, I think, will be inundated. So we need to be ready and certainly will Lake Lyle we're responsible for, Lake Lyle we're not, but as long as we're providing the management of uh, Lake Wallace with all that they need as well. Sorry, Lake Lyle, management with Lake Lyle with all they re needed as well. Planned in uh, preparation for the easing of COVID restrictions be noted. Happy to second. Good. Who moved it? Uh, Councillor Ring. Any uh, dissent? I declare that carried. Uh, 5.3 leap update. Uh, Mr Muir, once again. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, this is seeking to provide Council for an update on our project. Uh, probably noting, noting the subtle change from the Lithgow Evolving Economy Project to the Lithgow Emerging Economy Project. Uh, that was uh, in, in consultation with the, the uh, Department of Regional New South Wales in terms of our funding deeds. Uh, funding deeds, of course, have all been signed off. A project uh, group 
is a requirement of uh, that funding deed. It's made up of uh, various uh, government entities and, of course, the general manager and myself. Uh, we, uh, our last meeting was on Friday, where we have got basically approval to uh, finalise the brief this week and to go to market. And we'll put that out uh, through uh, our electronic tendering portal. Uh, we'll invite a number of consultants who have we have previously uh, um, spoken to in relation to the project. Uh, we anticipate a, a tender period of 28 days. Tenders then get assessed by the project control group um, and uh, decisions are made as to who to appoint and we'll advise the council, of course, at that time. Uh, and it is anticipated this time that the project, which is the, the consultancy, would be for a period of approximately six months. So we, over that over that six-month period, we'd expect to see uh, consultation. Of course, we're interested to see how the, the strategy that the consultants put forward for that consultation. Um, but uh, all going well, we're very much hoping that we can go to tender uh, late this week, and uh, which is means we're off and running with our with our project finally. Questions, councillors? Yeah, Mayor. Um, question on. Um, I, I take it, uh, Mr. Muir, that uh, the report talks about the brief being finalised on the third of September. So I take it that's occurred. Um, uh, it's just a couple of minor housekeeping matters have been tidied up today. Yep. Uh, and once that's done and to market, we'll be uh, certainly would be intending to provide councillors with a copy of said brief. Yeah. And it talks about. So has the brief been delayed? It talks about, and I'm, I'm quoting, there has been delays in approval to include a detailed section in the brief for the study of renewable energy job and investment opportunities. Is that in the brief or is that to come? I'd certainly keen to, to, to see, we'll, we'll get an opportunity to have a look at it uh, and I'd certainly be keen to see what the, that comes up with. Yeah. So where's, where's that up to? Is it, it's, is it's it there or is it coming? It certainly is in the brief. Uh, uh, but what it um, supposes is that the level of specific knowledge in relation to this area might require a specific um, expertise and it might be that it might need to be separated off and a, a separate consultant might do that work as part of this same brief. So it's definitely in there for sure. Any other questions, councillors? No. I'll move that way. Happy, to, happy to second. Move, <coughs> Councillor Stays and second to Councillor McAndrew. Any dissent? I declare that carried. Okay, councillors, we have a couple of reports, but we will move into uh, close council now. 